this I didn't come up with. I, I learned it through research and uh, through experience that this is basically what I'm going to talk about today, which is, you know, what a healthy restaurant should look like. Um, now, there are going to be some differences uh, depending on the market you're in. St. Louis is a low, lower rent market, so my other uh, cost is, is lower, a lot lower than 20%. You know, insurance is garbage. Uh, all these different things are, are, are probably aren't as expensive in St. Louis as they are in other places. So, um, so you got 30% cost of goods sold, 30% total payroll, 20% other, uh, and 20% profit. Uh, you, Again, like I said, let's say you're in New York City or San Francisco, your rent's sky high. You, you might only get a 15% profit margin because you might not be able to make the sales uh, you know, because of competition and just cost of doing business is higher. So this is just a standard kind of thing as far as like in my, in my, in my analysis, which I'll show you in my business, I have a higher profit margin. Uh, my pay, payroll is probably at 30, 31% because I pay extremely well. Uh, my cost of goods uh, is is a little close, is is under thirty. But I am also vegan and vegetarian, so we don't. I don't have the meat costs. Uh, um, I have the cashews are expensive, and the vegan the vegan meats expensive. But costs are pretty low um, for uh, for what I do. So um, so that's basically the formula in the sense of what you should be what you should be looking at uh and if you're not if you're not making a profit you know what what's wrong why why aren't you making that profit can you figure it out uh what's the problem oh well, i'm doing a million dollars in sales but i have a million dollars in expenses so uh you know the, the idea is to not be ashamed to you know you, you want to be profitable you want to make money but at the same time you want to be you, you want to create a a, a good business, something people like to come to and you want to treat your employees well. So again, that's a whole nother, an, another tangent. But what I wanted to show you is, um, but okay. So when I started out, I, uh, I set up this little model and I actually simplified it over, uh, over time. So you have the, 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 uh, the food and, you know, the three categories that I said, the food and liquor, the payroll, the other, and the margin. So the food and liquor, I, I input that. So I put it in at, let's say, 30, you know, I play around with that number, 29%, 30%. And I always, I'm conservative, so I put 32%. Even though my food costs for the year aren't $210,000, but they could be. So uh, I just, I always tend to, to be more conservative. The payroll lab, my payroll last year was 180000 uh, although I have up here uh, 204000 because just in case. So I was conservative in my estimate. Uh, the other, which is down under the fixed expenses, which I'll show you, is 15%. So on a conservative note, my margin should be 22% based on a couple of other things here. So I have the fixed expenses on this side. So I got total rent, I got insurance, I got electric, pest, ice. We don't have an ice maker, so we buy like bags of ice. Uh, Square, that's my POS. Advertising marketing, I don't have anything in there right now, but sometimes I, I spend garbage, gas, linen. The miscellaneous at $1,500, I just threw that in there because we don't really even, but something could come up that, you know, you could have a, a repair, you could have whatever. So I put that 1500 in there just as a safety uh, internet's 85, supplies 2,000, phone 35, website. My website's only $6.99. It's pretty good a month. Um, accounting, that's like payroll. Um, so total monthly. Uh, and then I have the total year. And I have my bank charges. So I do the bank charges 2.75% off of this, the projected sales. So all this is Inter, interwound uh, with formulas. So for the, the example, the revenue estimate. So instead of just estimating like the rev, yeah, obviously Tuesdays and Mondays, our revenue is much, much lower. So I just basically take the average revenue 
I just split it over seven days, but you could play with that and you can put each different day in if you wanted. Um, so right here I have a sales of 12,600 a, uh, a week. Uh, our sales are usually more than that, but again, I just wanted to be conservative just to make sure everything pencils. Um, so then I have seven, seven days. I'm open seven days a week now. I used to be open six. So I have that element of it. And then I have the payroll. So the payroll is uh, 460 hours uh, for every, every two weeks at average wage of $12.34. Um, that does not include uh, this 1.115 I hear, which is a company expenses. So I, as you know, as employers, you gotta pay 15%, about 15% on top of what you pay your your people based on like social security and all, all that other stuff. So, so I factor that in and uh, 26 pay periods. So payroll, that's how I get my payroll and then my monthly payroll. Then over here I have days. So I have 30.5 just because some days they don't have, some months don't have 31 days in it. Average revenue, monthly revenue, monthly expenses, monthly profit, uh, gross, gross profit. So. This is my model, and this is pretty much what I work with. Uh, and then I check my, every month I check, uh, I, I do an analysis based on all my money going in and out, where it's going, so I have one bank account and one credit card. I find this, so I only use, so I know exactly where every penny comes in and where every penny goes out. Um, every month. And, and really that's what this seminar is about. It's really about knowledge and watching like a hawk. Uh, you know, again, not being too obsessed at, at the point where you're splitting hairs, but at the same time not being like, oh, well, my, my accountant handles that. Or, you know, I don't need to worry about that. Um, I, I like to know everything. I like to know all the information and, you know, uh, doing financial analysis is, is, is fun for me. And so, uh, so you know, we had a pretty good year last year, uh, you know, and true enough, so I did my uh, payroll here, I did it the last two weeks, and then my wage for the last two weeks, my average wage, hourly wage was 12.35. So it was exactly what I have in this model. So pretty much the business uh, is going to be you know, my, I'm pretty steady because I'm a slice shop, so my, my income's not like a sit down, might be a little bit more up and down. Um, but really, another thing, what this whole seminar is about, it's about watching and it's also about uh, projection. You know, how well you, can you project um, your income, your expenses, and plan ahead? So if you're my football coach used to say, uh, you know, the will to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win. So if you have that will to prepare, then you're going to win um, in the sense of this is the approach I take uh, to to the business. And I never uh, take my hands off the wheel. So it's 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 pretty much um, uh, if you're not good at projecting, then you know, all these ratios that are healthy are based on your sales projection. So I'm not here to like tell people how to increase their sales or, or whatever. That's again, a whole nother topic. All I'm here right now to do is to say, what is your business doing now? How can you look at, how can you look at your business and where can you find, you know, oh, I didn't know that I'm paying this for this, or I didn't know what my ratio was of, you know, sales to, you know, uh, labor to sales labor to sales ratio, you know, what was it this week? What was it last week? Um, things like that. <laughs>